do we choose our mothers like as women do we let's say a woman in a heterosexual relationship do we choose a man that represents our mother or our father and vice versa like how does that i guess come to fruition yeah well i unfortunately it's not that clean and clear this is dating greatly the podcast where we talk about dating love and relationships if you're a woman who dreams of a healthy relationship but you're scared of putting yourself out there this podcast is for you. By the end of each episode, you're going to feel more confident, courageous, and empowered to put yourself out there and start meeting your person today. Welcome back to season three of Dating Greatly. I have some amazing guests and episodes coming your way, all designed to help you navigate the dating world with ease and have the best relationship of your life. I'm super excited to dive into this new season with you literally and metaphorically. I know you're going to love these episodes. I know you're going to get so much out of them and I know they're going to help you attract the best relationships of your life. All right, back to today's episode. Today, I welcome Mari Grande to the show. Mari is a creative arts therapist, a clinical social worker, and author of the book, Overcoming the Mother Wound. Mari and I talk about the mother wound today and how a mother wound can show up and affect our dating and relationship experience. Enjoy today's episode, and for any links that you hear on today's show, they are in the show notes. I am super excited um, to welcome to the show today, Mari Grande. Thank you, Mari, for being on the show today. Really excited to talk to you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Mm -hmm. So um, you're a creative arts therapist, and I'm gonna, I definitely have a lot of questions about that and about what you do. Um, But first, I want to talk about your book or the subject of your book, Overcoming the Mother Wound. Um, I so for those listeners that have never heard of the mother wound, can what what is the mother wound? and, And why should we know about it? Well, the mother wound is, um, it's actually something that we can't necessarily see. It's something that happens inside and it most often happens very early before we even realize it's happening. It's a relational wound. For instance, if you had, you were feeling sad about something and so you wanted to go to your room and, 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 and feel it and mom comes in and says come on you got chores to do what are you doing moping around you know right there there's a miss so mm. it's also a misattunement mm. um and then there's deeper wounds where there is actually outright criticism and neglect and i don't expect a mother to be perfect right we're human they're human and And as a matter of fact, it's been found that if a mother can be attuned and connected and responsive completely, just 30% of the time, you will develop a secure attachment. And um, I'm I'm constantly being asked, what is a mother wound? What is a mother wound? And even though I may tell someone, they'll say, but what is a mother wound? (laughs) And so somehow it's something that just, it's like, You don't want it to be there. It's like, how can you say that about my mother? Um, Mm. And so it's, it, I find it is, um, it can be very evasive, but it's, it's present and you know, you have one, if you can start noticing it in your relationships and not just with other people, but with yourself. Yeah. And even like the word mother wound, when I first heard it, like hearing that term immediately, it like, it hit me. I was like, Ooh, (laughs) like this is, this is the deep stuff. Like this is like, to me, the mother wound sounds really like in terms of healing, a really primal piece of healing or like a really primal piece of us. Yes, it is. It connects to our ability to connect with ourselves. Mm. Um, As you said, I'm an art therapist. So that is something in art therapy. When we're making art, we're actually involving the body 
And it has been found that when we are in a creative process, that the uh, that our amygdala, our alarm system, takes a break. So mm. we can actually be something rather than thinking something. And that wasn't always something that, that was available growing up with a mother wound. Um, and so a lot of the practices that I do, because I'm also... Um, I'm an art and trauma therapist. So I do art therapy and EMDR and somatic experiencing, hypnotherapy, all these different embodied approaches. And even though um, I don't call my book therapy, it I'm still using those approaches, those embodied approaches, because if we're going to work with the early, early relationship, we're not going to be able to talk it through. We have to go into the body and when I say into the body, it's simple. It's, it's sometimes just going into your breath can access the body. Mm-hmm. And that is one of the, our breath is the only thing that we have access to our autonomic, autonomic nervous system. Everything else is automatic, but we can control our breath and that can, that can, we can slow it down. We can speed it up. And that is connecting with our autonomic nervous system, which Mm -hmm. is connected to our unconscious, which is connected to our experiences. And um, yeah, so that's, that's why I find it so important and valuable to be using some of these less cognitive approaches. Not that you don't use your brain, but you need to be able to access more of a felt sense yeah being versus versus doing or thinking yeah yeah Mm -hmm. so I I do want to get uh I definitely want to go back to like the whole embodiment and going into our body and just being um but before that I do want to know um how does the mother wound in terms of like dating and relationships do you have some examples how it can show up and like get in the way or cause havoc (laughs) well um, have you heard the expression, I married my mother or father? Yes. <laughs> um, well, it makes a lot of sense when you think about it through an attachment lens. Yeah. And the different attachment styles, you probably know, there's the secure, the anxious, the avoidant, and the disorganized. And I, I can break those down if you'd like, but those are the the, the main ones. And um, when you're... Can you, can you break those down really quick for us? Sure, sure. Well, the... Um, the secure is when the care was consistent, attuned, caring, safe, and good enough. And mm, I love that. Good enough. I really love that. Right. Um, and that's a term actually um, Donald Winnicott, an early, early attachment. Um, uh, he actually was a pediatrician and he worked with children and he developed that term. He's, he's a wonderful theorist. Um, and, um, yeah, so the, the, uh, anxious is when there were no reliable adults, or if they were, um, they were too much to bear. So, Mm. um, you develop like a fear of abandonment, you're relying on external approval, usually have a negative self image and sense of self and others an overly high image of others. Mm. Can I ask you really quick, um, just with the anxious attachment style, because I've heard that women tend to fall into the anxious attachment style. So I wonder like, how come it, it affects women more? Is it just because like, do you, do you have any kind of, input on on that well i could just speak from my experience which is uh, i think that that and it kind of goes into when i start categorizing the, the mother wounds because the male mother wounds they can they there are parallels and it's some there are anxious men and but i think it's more masked because they come from a, a place where I'm supposed to be the provider. I can't be vulnerable. I have to show this. And so that is, it, it almost becomes like the second persona that they present. Mm. 
doesn't necessarily mean there isn't anxiety underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And also there's a stance that we play um, that when someone is anxiously attached, they tend to be to go to someone who's more ambivalent, which mm. I was going to go to next, yes, which keeps yes. the distance. And mm. that there's and then when the anxious starts getting distant, the, the ambivalent starts getting anxious and it goes back and forth. So it's very much in relationship. So that's why even though I make these categories and there are these categories, there's still play within them. It's mm. there's life that go like the nuances are about what happens in real life. Um, so, um, mm -hmm. and let me just go back to the, the, um, I mentioned something about the anxious. So the avoidant, the avoidant is, um, where you don't feel valued. You're not, you don't feel important and you usually have to fend for yourself. So sometimes the avoidant can actually have a, a positive view of themselves, um, but again, it, there's that false self, and that's also something Donald Winnegott talks about, the false self. And um, so, but they prefer to maybe depend on other, have others depend on them rather than they depend on others. Mm. They rarely seek support, and it's really hard to get close. Oh, yeah. you're hitting a nerve right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I always thought, you know, like, from, ch from childhood or like just in general that I was anxious um, but actually when I did the test I showed up quite like I did have anxious but I think avoidant was actually more dominant and as you're saying this like fending for yourself not seeking support like whoa yeah that's mm -hmm. that's definitely or it was me right 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 yeah and as you um learn about these styles you realize oh I have this and I have that and I have that but it's also Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, and depending on your situation too, and often depending on the relationship you're in mm. or the space you're in. But yes, and I think that's very wise of you to notice it. It's not just one that you have a little bit of this, but you have most of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm. And then we go to the disorganized, and that's when you never know what to expect. And um, so this 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 attachment style struggles to regulate, emotionally regulate. Uh, there's a desire for intimacy, but it's really hard to trust. Um, there's a fear of being hurt, so they avoid attaching. And this is where the caretaker might have been really loving and then really scary. And so that um, becomes, you know, you think of also maybe an alcoholic home where you don't know what to project or was that person super lovey and then super abusive that sort of disorganization really disorganizes psyche and that's that's a real tough one mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay and so um in so with these attachment styles, like how do they, how do they connect to the mother wound? <laughs> well, um, if you can imagine that happening to you being, you know, feeling like you're alone when you like still need to be fed or feeling like, you know, is, 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 is mommy okay that, that you have to go take care of them instead of being taking care of you. That starts building um, what, um, well, there's I there's different ones for men, different ones for women, even though they can go back and forth. And um, it can show up in like the a, a critical other wound where you feel like I don't matter. I'm too much. I'm too little. Or you can be the invisible mother wound where I'm not important, I'm not seen, um, and I have to do it all alone. And that kind of stems with the, that goes with the avoidant. And with, with mother wounds, you'll see characteristics like self-doubt, perfectionism, this imposter syndrome, um, even if you have proof of success, and um, that overriding 
which, you know, like I have these feelings, but they're not important. I can't feel these. I'm, I'm too busy doing this, like just dis- dismissing. Because mm. if you, you will dismiss yourself, uh, a lot of self sabotage, um, loneliness, overcompensating. Mm. I don't want to make singer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just, you know, as you're, as you're listing these um, character traits or these, I guess, symptoms of a mother wound, you know, with the podcast being uh, called dating greatly and, you know, the audience mainly being single women that are either, you know, starting to date, maybe in the early stages of relationship or not quite sure, man, this shows up so much in, in the dating phase, like the self-sabotage, like, you know, if you're on a date or if you're even just having a conversation, you're sending a message and you doubt yourself, like, did I say the right thing? Like, did I say something wrong? How's this person going to receive me? Um, or the imposter syndrome when you're getting ready to date, like I hear so many women say, well, when they, when they talk about their vision for a partner, for a life, is this realistic? This seems far-fetched. This seems fantasy, you know, mm-hmm. not not believing that they're capable of something like that. So yeah, I, I can see a lot of this showing up in, in dating. What's, what's your experience with how this shows up in relationships? Well, um, when you have an unhealed mother wound, um, you, you, you tend to, um, because our first relationship is usually with our mother and that has a huge impact. It leaves like a, imprint right so that's going to influence us consciously and unconsciously and that's where it gets really tricky and how we perceive it's going to affect how we perceive ourselves and how we perceive others so for instance if your mother was cold critical mean that may be who you find yourself with someone who's cold critical mean even though when you started dating that wasn't so it wasn't showing Right, but somehow you found yourself in that situation. So, because with the with an unhealed mother wound, it's like you're you're have this you're in this fog, and you think you're seeing things, but there's a whole other layer that's being that 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 is impacting what you are doing and how you're feeling, what you're seeing. Something you might also see is like trusting too soon. Mm. When we have a mother wound that's not been dealt with, we it's really hard to connect inside. I, I say this is such an important part of, of the work that, that happens with overcoming the mother wound is first connecting to that part of you that is so important, but has been missed. And sometimes you don't even realize that you, that you missed it or that it was missed. And so that's why when it's almost like your your Geiger counter is 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 off. <laughs> so you will find yourself in these situations and not knowing why. Why am I doing this again? Why do I keep on finding this person? Well, it it's um I I really think it can be traced back to something that is not that's that's still active inside of you, not to blame anyone. But it's it's sometimes the work is is very simple, and the simplest work can be the hardest. Something that came up for me just now is, um, again, you know, you said a while ago we choose we marry our mothers or our fathers. In in your opinion, do we choose our mothers? Like as women, do we? Let's say a woman in a heterosexual relationship. Do we choose a man that represents our mother or our father, and vice versa, or is it? Like, how does that, I guess, come yeah. to fruition? Yeah, well, I unfortunately, it's not that clean and clear. Um, for instance, I <laughs> I married, I've married pieces of my mother and father, um, some really good parts of them, and some other ones that obviously I still need to work on. <laughs> um, but it's it's a matter of, of, you know, paying attention to that and go, whoa. And in it, it's in that way. You're still it's still a healing journey. It's it's a, it's this it's this, uh, it's not a quick fix, but mm-hmm. that bringing awareness to it is really crucial. And that and um, being with a partner that is 
open to, to working on that. So in, in your opinion, does everyone have a mother wound to different degrees? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And like, how can we determine like, what's the severity of our mother wound? Okay. Well, I do have a quiz, um, mm -hmm. on, you know, uh, do you have a mother wound? And it's, you know, we, it's an escape. It's just, you can't avoid it because we know that we are human. We are imperfect. And when something happens, when you're growing up and like, I give you a couple of examples, like, you know, if your parent gets angry or ignores you or says something that doesn't feel good. And as long as whatever happens is addressed in a timely, consistent, sincere, loving way, then that wound is healed right there. If it's continued to, it happens again and again and again, and no one's addressing it, it becomes a wound. You know, I'm thinking of um, a client I had who, who she was, um, her mother was extremely critical about her appearance. Just, it, it's unbelievable the things she quoted me. Unbelievable. And now she's an adult and she comes to me and, and she's this gorgeous young woman and she just lists off all the things that are wrong with her. It, it's, and and you nobody, no matter how much positive feedback she can, she's, no, no, that's, no, that's just not true. And she just has to deal with it. And it's, I mean, that, that's, that's like, that's on the severe side of a mother wound. I'm thinking about all the, you know, women in my life and, and in general, women in general, the, the amount of insecurities we have about our appearance, uh, whether it's body or whatever it is. Um, and I'm not sure all of our mothers were critical but I think a mother wound, and I'm not sure, tell me if I'm wrong, can also be developed just by an energy. So I know um, the women in my, when it was my mother or my grandmother, they were all had big insecurities about what they looked like or how they felt about themselves. And I, I picked that up and so did my sister. And, and I think so does every woman. So yeah, how much does like energy or, or just how a mother feels about herself, how much of a role can that play? That's huge. Hello, it's Yvonne interrupting your podcast episode for a quick announcement. My free guide, How to Attract Your Dream Partner Without the Dating App BS, is available on my website now. It's the best method for attracting your soulmate in an aligned way. And it follows the exact steps that I use to attract my partner and that my clients use to attract theirs. I believe in this guide so much that I know you're going to start attracting your person, most likely in less than four weeks. Go to lifecoachyvonne.com and download your guide today. Now back to the episode. And that's just because I think you're bringing up another really important issue, which is the intergener transmission of intergenerational, the intergenerational transmission of trauma. Mm. It happens through energy, through epigenetics. It's actually scientifically proven that it is, it is passed down. And when, cause, and we don't, you know, we don't know what, what happened to grandma, you know, what happened to great, great grandma. And, and, and just think of culturally the messages that have been given to us as, as women. And this, this is a huge, huge topic. And I think that having, because I'm not sure if, any of your previous generations have worked on, on, on healing that trauma. Um, or maybe they did a little bit and then you do a little bit and it gets better and better, or maybe there's still this piece that's, that's still in there. So there's, and I know, I know, I, I think that you do a lot of like, like work around energy too. So that's important that you're most likely ending that transmission. Mm -hmm. Um, because there's that is the the only way and i think it's um there is an american indian tribe which i'm sorry i don't know who it is or i can't remember what it is but that that healing 
your generation heals the previous seven generations backwards and seven generations forward. Mm, That's so powerful. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, that would be incredible, (laughs) you know, yeah. And I think our, the generation now, you know, um, healing and getting help and working through some of these insecurities, some of these limitations. um, Yeah. It's just been almost like a, it's, it's definitely accepted. It's, it's encouraged. It's almost like everyone is doing it on some level. So I think we're really lucky in that regard to, to be alive at this time. And um, yeah, to, I mean, I don't want to say we have a great responsibility, but I think with the awareness, the amount of information and knowledge out there, we, we can set our future generations up for, for success. Yeah. I, I, I totally believe that that potential is there too. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, providing hope, providing resources is so important because there's so many wonderful modalities out there and programs. And, you know, I'm like rooting for that mother wound and there's other things that are happening that are just wonderful as well. Um, But I think this is, I think my passion is with this because it's so basic. It's so essential. And um when we because even you know even like before we started we did a little grounding and that that connecting to self is just so important i mean we 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 take it for granted but just that that simple pause and i think that more and more um of humanity is is understanding that and i you know i don't know if it's my my bubble but there's or my my bubbles out there but I'm just hoping these bubbles can burst and spread uh, because I think that that's, that's really, that true healing happens when we can really go in and reconnect to this source that, 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 that hasn't been injured because there is, we can get to that place. And that's such, it, it's such a relief when we can go there. Um, Mm. and I think even with, um, with dating, I think it's important for, um, for like preparing to, to just really spend some time with yourself, really grounding and figuring out what recalling, like what makes you feel good? What, like when even going, even starting a journal, like what, what places people and things make me feel good? And making a note of that and what don't. And and so even when you're on your date, just kind of ticking that off, like, mm, this feels good. Oh, that's not so good. And oh, that's unacceptable. You know, just really tuning into that. Mm-hmm. Something that most likely was ignored if you've had the different types of mother wounds that I discuss. Yeah, really trusting our intuition, how things feel in our body, um, tuning into energy of another person and how that makes us feel. I love yeah. that. So just something as simple as journaling can really assist in just, yeah. So it's like it's reconnecting to us. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so have you... I'm sure you've heard this, but like um, becoming our own mother, like remothering ourselves. Um, can you speak to that? Yeah, that we absolutely that that is that is the key. But yes, and how do we remother ourselves in the way that we needed to be mothered? Mm. And that's that's the work. Um, and that's also why I, I like to have groups or. Um, of, of, of people working on overcoming the mother wound because then they start um, helping each other and like, well, wait a minute. I, I no, that's not, I think that you, you're being hard on yourself right now. And, and, and realizing, you know, adjusting that, that mother mm. internal mother, because there's a default of like, oh, I gotta do more, I gotta do more. And so having the kind of corrective experiences with people you trust, um, and that is key to, to healing the mother wound is really being around people that 
know how to love mm. and people that can, that you can, they, they can love you. And yeah. then you start learning at a very deep, deep level. Mm. Mm-hmm. It just, it's bringing up something for me, uh, an experience I had um, just a couple months ago around sisterhood and like I think for women and specifically healing their mother wound like the importance of sisterhood and having women around you and I was a part of a woman's uh, women's circle and we had we were sharing and this day I allowed myself to because being this um, avoidant I never asked for support I was like I can handle it I don't need to ask others for support Um, But I just allowed myself to cry in circle with these other women. And then (laughs) it was just a magical experience because I I don't know what I was crying about, but something about insecurities not being good enough. And and then one after the other, like the women just came around me and one put her hand on my knee and one put her hand on my back and one laid her head in my lap. And one like I was just like in this embrace of about six or seven women. And it was like, I really bawled at this point because it was so vulnerable. But in that moment, I felt so held and mothered and I allowed myself to release and let go and be held by other women. And that to me has been one of the most potent experiences of my adult life. Oh, that sounds so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a rebirth. It yeah, it, it almost it was in a way, yes. Yeah. And and just having that relationship with another woman, um, whether in circle or with just one other woman. And and for me, the importance of women's hands, like mm-hmm. being on me in a loving way. And I I guess that's where we could go back to this embodiment and tapping into the body and how we can use that to to heal this as well, if you can speak to that. Yeah, well, again, these wounds are very early and they were felt wounds. And so when we want to uh, connect to that place in us that's hurt, vulnerable, scared, we need to be able to to go there. And um, one of the, like when we use art, for instance, we are giving ourselves we're not we're just in that being space and they actually have an exercise using that using art making because even with art making there can be this critical voice oh yeah for sure (laughs) yeah and this this whole six-step process that i do with the, the combination of um writing drawing writing drawing it's 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 um and it really taps into that inner critic and and sort of connecting with it and containing it. And because um, when things are in the shadow, we don't know what they are. We just know that something's going on. So we need to really bring light to that, see it, feel it, and release it. We want to get to that, our reptilian brain, mm-hmm. which is just all about impulses because that's what we were first born with our just we have you know, heartbeat and movement and all that. And then we start getting our limbic brain, our emotional brain. So those are the early places that we want to connect with. We start getting the thinking brain that takes us offline, takes us mm. out. So when we are in that base place with just basic instincts and emotions, that's where we want to go because there's without that that chatter. So we can really be in that space. Yeah. So with, with art, like why is it important to use art and like these embodiment exercises to heal the mother wound or any other internal wounds that we have? Yeah, it's, well, it it comes back to that non-thinking on, you know, just being, and Mm -hmm. that can happen with when we, when we start drawing and I often use non-dominant hand drawing and writing, because even though we can, that our little, our chatterbox can be really, really tricky. <laughs> so it's important to sometimes just, you know, to become as, um, just a, to be, allow yourself to be as messy as non, 
um, linear as possible to really let yourself just be. And I think I find that working with art does that. Um, and even like using uh, write, writing prompts using non-dominant hand also accesses that place that is not so uh, bossy. Mm hmm. So for for people that are listening that are like, oh, I'm no good at art. I don't know how to draw because like there is that criticism in a big way that comes up. Um, what what can you recommend to get past that barrier? Well, um, you know, I I have in my my in the course that I have on overcoming the mother wound. The first thing I do is I hand out an artist license, which gives you permission to uh to make a mess, to be, to do things wrong, because that, how can you create something unless you make a mistake? It's just not going to happen. It's like, how can you, if you want to have that perfect line and you don't know how to draw yet, it's just not possible. So it's a matter of understanding um, what's real. And it's a matter of also given permission. Sometimes I know it's hard, but even giving yourself, like writing yourself a permission slip, it's okay to make to not to to make an imperfect drawing mm. it's okay you know maybe even intentionally like i'm going to draw like i'm um, in kindergarten and some of the exercises i have are really about the um just expression because there's no right or wrong way to express yourself mm -hmm. and that's what also art therapy is about it's not about the creation it's about the process so, mm -hmm. and, and I also use the mandala a lot, which is the circle. Mm -hmm. I find that really helpful because it's a container. It's also a focuser. It also represents the world. It can, can represents the womb. So it's, I find that a really healing model um, tool to use when we're working, doing a lot of the exercises. Mm. One of the the, the a real simple one is to for instance um one of an early exercise might be to like i have them like draw you know draw your kitchen and then and give you like two minutes to do that and then then after that write down all the things you said to yourself negative and positive and separate them and then start, and then, and then you know, put put what you want inside the mandala, what you want to keep, and what you want to let go on the outside of your mandala. And even that starts working with your mirror neurons because you start seeing like, oh, this is what I want, and ugh, that's outside. And when you just you um, spend time with just even simply being with that, looking at that, it starts sinking in because that's how we learn things is through our mirror neurons. Mm. So things were modeled to us from our mother through our mirror neurons. You know, did mother smile at you when you were feeling good? Or did she have a frown on your face, on her face when you were glad about something? And that kind of messes up those, those connections we have, our mm. learning. Mm -hmm. I can see how this, um, you know, incorporating art and, you know, getting out of our out of our minds and um, like some of the exercises you're talking about, it's uh, it would be so beneficial too to women that are entering like the dating phase or in relationship. Like there's so many metaphors here about, yeah. you know, like your vision, what do you like? What don't you like? And also like, here's your permission slip to mess it up. Like, go ahead. Yeah. This is about the experience. It's about you expressing yourself, being your tr real, you authentic you. Um, and, attracting the person that is a good match for you or like the best match for you. And yeah, I think just learning to express ourselves authentically when maybe we've been afraid to, or have received so much criticism in our childhood, when we do express ourselves, like it's so important to come back to that. And I can really see how art can play a huge role. Yeah. In that. Yeah. And even, even coming back for my, from a date and just like just scribbling to see you're not even knowing you know what you're feeling but you're scribbling and then afterwards noticing like oh I didn't know it was like that you know like if you're the colors you use or whatever but don't think about it beforehand just like um we call that response art mm. so kind of interesting to do is to 
just see what happens. And, 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 I, but again, and again, if, like you said, kind of dating is like, if you could, if it's hard, but if you can think about it as, um, an exercise, like I'm doing this, like, you know, like mm. I'm taking a course on dating <laughs> and, uh, and just doing these little exercises afterward, before and afterwards and, and start keeping a, uh, a folder. Mm, yeah, that's a great idea. I love that. Awesome. Um, in in ter- getting back to um, again the like healing this mother wound and healing our our deep set issues, our primal patterns. I guess. Um, do we need our mother to heal the mother wound? Do we need to involve her? Do we need to have conversations? Do we need to sit next to her? You know, it depends on your mother. Um, some mothers aren't available. Some mothers aren't capable. Some mothers aren't interested and some mothers are, but they don't know how. And if, if that's the case and that that's actually quite ideal if they, if they are willing, um, cause sometimes it can be more painful to try to, it's almost like re traumatizing yourself, um, because now, you know, all this stuff and you, you go into, to work with it, to heal it. And it's like, what you're, just, you're so ungrateful or. You know, so that's something you want to be and just, you know, again, knowing yourself and knowing yourself helps you also see, maybe see your mother a little clearer, Mm -hmm. but it's not, you don't need to do the healing with her. Mm -hmm. I mean, wonderful. If that's possible, it's not always, and sometimes it's preferable, preferable to not even have her involved in extreme Mm -hmm. cases. Yeah. So um, the book that you wrote, Overcoming the Mother Wound, um, what made you write or what made you want to write this book? And um, maybe if you have some of your own experience that you want to share. Yeah, a mother wound is very much like um, complex PTSD. And that's a relational wound that happens again and again and again early on. And it's not healed. It's repeated. It's not addressed. It's repeated. And you find it later in other relationships. And and adults have PTSD, CPTSD, complex PTSD. So in my practice, in my private practice as a therapist, I was seeing a lot of my clients that had issues with their parents, primarily their mothers. And I had, um, it, I was noticing a lot of women were much more vocal about it. And I had this one client who said to me, who would get, we do great work, she go home, be back to where she started. Great work, come back. It was just yo-yo. And she says to me in exasperation, can't you, can you find me a group for daughters of critical mothers? And I said, oh yes, that sounds great. So I looked and I looked, and this was a while back um, and I couldn't find one. And so, and then I said, wait a minute, I have a bunch of women that have this issue. So let me see if I can form a group. So that was going on for a while. And then I realized, you know, men wanted to come in too. And also I felt like it was being a little too I, negative. So I said, I wanted to, because women were healing. So I said, let's make it overcoming the mother wound. So uh, that's why I switched the that. And then I, um, so I had this course and this group and then I said, let me do a book because as I was creating the course, we kept on referring to the modules as chapters because it just felt like a progression and it had mm-hmm. a learning. So I basically took that course and turned it into this book. So if you're reading the book or if you're taking the course, you can uh, join this membership um, and that gives you access to monthly meetings and it gives you there's extra exercises extra guided meditations and you know it's a whole program and it's 24 7 so there's a lot of support so that's how um i developed this book and um yeah and then i and i you know i i definitely have my attachment issues and i you know i part of creating this has been so healing for me mm-hmm. and I'm like whoa, whoa why wasn't this there this when I was coming up 
So um, it's, it's very personal. It's very, I feel like it's very organic because it grew mm -hmm. out of a need. It's not like, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to create this program. It came out of a need. And, um, and so I'm hoping that this book, we're going to be able to reach more people and um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's some really important work you're doing. And I'm sure you saw firsthand of how impactful your work is. Um, and I would love to know, like, some of the women that join this course, like, or the group at the very beginning, like um, Daughters of Critical Mothers, at the end, when they, you know, completed the program or went through this with you, like, what were the, like, the biggest, the biggest transformations that you noticed in them? Well, um, finding work was one of them. There's, they were very, there is, they were underemployed and uh, self-confidence was very small. Um, another got one, uh, got married. Um, and another one is dating and, uh, yeah, they're just, they're, they are doing quite well. Wow. Yeah. It sounds like, like liberated and living their life, um, without their, the shackles of the past. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um. And actually one became a therapist. She was, uh, she had the, the education, but she didn't want to do the final, the, that work. Mm -hmm. And uh, she got the confidence to, Hey, this is really important stuff. Let me go finish my, let me go finish it. So. I love that. I love that. If you could um, give the women and probably the odd man listening one piece of advice um, or just like one thing to kind of take on their way today, what would that be? Mm. Well, I think keeping a journal to start logging yourself, logging when you feel your best, just really paying attention to that. When you feel your best, what's going on? Who are you with? Where are you? And how long do you stay there? And just kind of because it's 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 a form of self reflection, and because it's this work is a lot about building a relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. That's great, Amari. What's the best way for listeners to connect with you and check out your book? Check out your program. Yeah the the best way is uh, through um, my. Uh, teaching and coaching website, which is creativehealingintegration.com. And on that, there's a it lists the so creativehealingintegration.com and it lists, it has a place where you can purchase my book. It has my courses, my overcoming the mother womb. There's a whole program for that. And also there's a resource section and that has some free resources. And there's also a quiz on that on do you have, do I have a mother wound? Um, and you can also follow me on Instagram at creative healing integration. I don't know if you're gonna have a show notes where we can send you the links to the quiz and the course and the book and all that good stuff. Yeah. I'll make sure to list all those in the show notes, the quiz, the book, everything will be there for easy, easy access. Um, yeah. So Actually, you know, one thing before we wrap up for today, I want to know, I've, I seen the most powerful movie on the mother wound recently, and I'm wondering if you've seen it. So this film is with Joaquin Phoenix, and it's called Bo is Afraid. Have you seen it? How old has it recent? It's very recent. I think it's this year or last year. Yeah, if you if you get a chance to watch this film, oh my God. <laughs> It's yeah, it's all around the mother wound. It's it's a ride. This movie, there is yeah, so much. I would love to chat with you again after you watch this movie. It's uh, I highly recommend it. Yeah, it's just uh, it knocked me out of the water. It was crazy. Like yeah, it's just a ride. But afterwards, like my partner and I were probably for the next hour just like dissecting like the symbolism the metaphors like what did this mean what and, and all around like uh, mental illness um mm -hmm. around the mother wound uh, around like a very critical mother what that can do to a man like yeah it was it was pretty oh, intense yeah. yeah i talk about how mental illness does come into the mother wound it's 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 almost always there 
Okay. Well, um, it's been awesome hearing more about this today and it's been great talking to you. And the final question before we wrap up for today, what song are you dancing to nowadays? <laughs> okay. Um, I have, I, I, I've, I've two songs mm -hmm. One is when like in the morning, when I want to wake up, I'll like shake, do the, like, you know, the whole thing. And I, mm. that's what I like to listen to. Um, Pump It by the Black Eyed Peas. That gets me moving. <laughs> oh, <laughs> cool. Thank you so much, Marie, for um, chatting with me today and for um, helping us understand this subject a little bit better and the importance of, yeah, remothering ourselves. And thank you for the really important work that you do. I hope everyone checks out your book and your website. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you and I appreciate the work you're doing as well. And, um, and your podcast is just so well paced. And I appreciate that. Oh, thank you.